The M4 Pro Mac Mini is, without a doubt, the best Mac that I've owned or used. But six months on, would I still buy it? Is it still relevant? And more importantly, should you buy it? Or is there now another option? My name's David, and this is Talking Tech. The M4 Pro Mac Mini has changed the way I work for the better. It's not until you get your hands on one and put it on your desk, you'll kind of understand what I mean, but it just feels a cleaner, neater, more flexible way of working. The Mac Mini was one of the few Macs that I'd never owned or used, the others being the Mac Studio and the Mac Pro. So when Apple announced last year that they were putting M4 Apple Silicon into the Mac Mini, you can bet that my name was gonna be on one of them. I was hooked. I knew I needed to have one. I was gonna end up going full circle. Originally, I'd worked on an iMac, so on a desktop Mac. Then when the first M1 Apple Silicon Macs came along, I got myself my M1 Max MacBook Pro. So I started working on a laptop. And now here I am going full circle and going back to working on a desktop. But I decided while I was looking at the specs of the Mac Mini, that it was gonna be a replacement for my M1 Max MacBook Pro. I had my worries about trading down from an M1 Max to an M4 Pro, from a Max chip to a Pro chip, but I just thought, this newer technology, of course, it's based on three nanometer, which means that it's going to give us better performance and better efficiency. I just thought that this latest version of Apple Silicon would be better than my three-year-old M1 Max MacBook Pro. And this M4 iteration of Apple Silicon is by far the biggest jump forward we've had since that original switch from Intel over to M1 Apple Silicon back in 2020. Now, if you are going out to buy an M4 Mac Mini, the first choice you've got is between the Pro chip and the non-Pro chip. What are the differences? Well, there's quite a few differences in there. First of all, with the M4 Pro chip, you'll get the option to have more CPU and more GPU cores. You'll get a quicker memory bandwidth as well. When it comes to memory, the basic M4 chip tops out at 32 gigs of memory, whereas with the M4 Pro chip, you can double that up to 64 gigs of memory. Now, it's taken me some time to realize this, and I've mentioned it a lot in recent videos, that specking out any Apple Silicon Mac it's all about getting that memory right. If you make the right choices about memory and put as much money as you've got into buying as much memory as you can afford and that you think you're gonna need, that's what's gonna give you the longevity and save you having any pain points or pinch points down the line. It's that, getting the memory wrong, that would cause you to have problems with your daily workflow. Get that right and you'll be fine. Other improvements that you can make by going for the M4 Pro as opposed to the standard M4 chip is on the storage as well, the basic chip, tops out at two terabytes of storage, whereas on the M4 Pro, you can go all the way up to eight terabytes of storage as well. So the specs I decided to go for after oh, I spent ages trying to get it just right. And as I said, I knew it was going to replace my M1 Max MacBook Pro. This was going to be my main machine. So I wanted to get the specs right. So I ended up going for the improved M4 Pro chip with the extra cores of CPU and GPU in it. I went for 48 gigs of memory, one terabyte of SSD storage. And I also put on the 10 gigabit ethernet port as well, which is now hooked up to my NAS drive. That means that I spent 2,199 pounds when I bought my M4 Pro Mac Mini. There's a line of argument that says, the moment you start ticking the option boxes on a Mac Mini, it starts to lose its USP and its USP being value for money. And I kind of get that. I kind of understand that point. Apple tax is a real thing. And the moment you start adding on the most expensive of the options, which is memory, the price ramps up really, really quickly. If you jump up from that 512 gigs of basic storage up to say a terabyte, that's another 200 pounds. If you jump up to two terabytes, that's 600 pounds. If you want four terabytes, no problem. Apple will take 1200 pounds off you. And if you want that eight terabytes of Apple SSD storage in your M4 Pro Mac Mini, it's going to cost you £2,400. Even I can't stop laughing when I say that. £2,400. It's the price of another Mac. But of course, when we got the M4 Pro Mac Mini and the M4 MacBook Pros as well, we got Thunderbolt 5. There was much said about it at the time. And I'm a huge fan of Thunderbolt 5. Basically, those ports unlock really, really quick speeds, up to 80 gigs per second of data transfer speed, which means that you've now got another option rather than buying Apple Apple SSD storage, get external SSD. I'm a massive, massive convert to it now. For years, I always bought Apple storage, partly through laziness, partly through naivety. But also, we didn't have these fast transfer speeds before. Thunderbolt 4 and Thunderbolt 5 in particular have unlocked this idea of using external SSDs. And to be honest, I can't tell the difference. Getting away from geek bench tests and so on, in real world use, everyday use of what I do here in the studio, I can't tell the difference whether I'm editing from the Max SSD or from an external SSD. They're much more expandable, of course, and totally flexible. I've got two on the go all the time. I've got a Thunderbolt 5 
external SSD connected up to my Mac Mini all of the time in the studio. That's got four terabytes of NVMe storage in it. And I've got a Thunderbolt 4 enclosure that I carry around with me from here back to home so I can carry on working. And that's got two terabytes of SSD inside of it. I am a massive, massive believer in these now. They've just opened up a totally different way of working and mean you can get a lot of storage on your Mac without paying those ridiculous prices that Apple want to charge you. With WWDC just around the corner, if you're enjoying your Apple content, and in particular, the content I'm making here every week, don't forget, drop me a sub. It takes seconds and it really genuinely does help me out and the channel out. It helps the channel to grow, more people see the videos, and I can carry on making these videos for you week after week. There's lots coming up, so if you're enjoying the videos, just drop that sub and also turn on notifications. Now, when I bought my M4 Pro Mac Mini, the M4 Mac Studio wasn't a thing. Yes, we knew it was coming, we just didn't know when. So I took the bird in the hand approach. I wanted an M4 Mac Mini to start working on then. I've got no regrets. Since the day I bought it, it's earned me a living. So I've got no regrets at all. But if I was sitting with you now, and you were saying to me that you were thinking of specking out an M4 Pro Mac Mini, similar to the way I've done mine, I'd say, no, no, think again. Look at the Mac Studio, just look or what you're getting for that basic price, that entry-level Mac Studio, it packs a real punch. For starters, you're going to get more CPU and GPU cores. You're getting even quicker memory bandwidth as well. You'll get better media encoder and decoder engines, better external display support. And okay, the memory tops out at 36 gigs of memory, but to be honest, 36 gigs on an M4 Apple Silicon Mac, it's plenty good enough. I doubt if I would notice a difference between 36 and the 48 gigs of memory that I've got. The only thing is, it comes with only 512 gigs of SSD storage on it. And I don't think for a serious Mac, that's enough. I'd go up to one terabyte. So let's say the only change I made to that basic Mac Studio, that basic M4 Mac Studio, which put one terabyte of Apple SSD in it, guess what? The price comes out to the penny exactly the same as the money I spent on my M4 Pro Mac Mini, £2,200. But not only do you get all those advantages on the Mac Studio that I mentioned a moment ago, the I.O. is greatly improved on it as well. You get five Thunderbolt 5 ports on the back as opposed to the three that I've got. The 10 gigabit Ethernet port, that comes as standard. On the front, you get a couple of USB-A ports and you get an SD card slot which makes buying the Mac Studio pretty compelling. Talking about I.O., similarly to the way that the aftermarket suppliers worked out that with the Thunderbolt 5 ports, we could have quick external SSD enclosures. They've done that with hubs. They knew that if they could make some hubs that gave us the I.O. we were missing, that would really round off this Mac Mini. And they've done it. This one from a Cassis that I've been sent through, I'm not being paid for this, I just think it's a really cool bit of kit, answers virtually all of the problems that we had with the I.O. on the Mac Mini originally. On the back, you've got a pair of 4K display ports, and you've also got a 30 watt PD port as well. On the front, you've got some USB-A ports, and also, if the power button was an issue for you, you couldn't reach the power button, that's been solved with this enclosure from Acasis 2. You can turn it on and off on the side there. On top, you've got an SD card slot and a TF card slot. It really has solved virtually all the problems that we had with the Mac Mini for not a lot of money. And also, as if that wasn't enough, you can put up to 16 gigs of NVMe SSD into it as well. It really is worth looking at. If you like the look of this and would like to get your hands in, it's only just been launched, and I've left some details in the description for you where you can get yourself a really, really early bird great rate by ordering quickly. So go and take a look at it. It's a really good solution if you have got yourself an M4 Pro Mac Mini or even an M4 Mac Mini and just want a little bit more I.O. on it, this is worth taking a look at. As I said, I've got no regrets that I bought the M4 Pro Mac Mini when I bought it. It's still the best Mac that I've ever used. I've had no beach boarding. I can't remember the fans coming on and it's powerful, it's really, really powerful. It's portable too. Early on, I used to take it home two or three days a week to carry on working at home with it, which of course you couldn't do with the Mac Studio. Honestly, I've got no regrets at all, but all I'm saying is that if you're looking at an M4 Pro Mac Mini right now, just do yourself a favor and consider the Mac Studio. But if you're set on a Mac Mini, there are ways that you can save money. And I think there's a real sweet spot as well. First of all, consider if you need the M4 Pro chip. Not everybody does, and there's a real saving to be made there. So decide ahead of time if you really need to spend that extra money on the M4 Pro chip. Also, on the memory, 24 gigs will probably be enough for most people doing most work. Yes, I've gone up to 48, but I kind of push mine a little bit more than maybe you would every week. But 24 gigs, again, on an M4 Apple Silicon Mac is probably going to be plenty. You might not need the 10 gig Ethernet port. Maybe you haven't got blazing fast internet to the door. Maybe you're not going to use a NAS drive, so you can save yourself some money there. And also, don't forget, top out at just one terabyte of SSD storage. Now, if you configure that Mac Mini to those specifications, say with the M4 Pro chip on it, 
That's only going to cost you £1,600. And even less, it's only going to cost you £1,200 with the standard M4 chip in it. Now that, that is the USP of the Mac Mini. That is a bargain, and that is great value for money, and would give you a machine that's neat, tidy, super cool to have in your desk, and would last for a long, long time to come. As I said, I have no regrets that I bought my M4 Pro Mac Mini when I did, none whatsoever. Most importantly for me, it's added this, an expectation. When I come into the studio every day, I love to sit down in front of it. It just has created the most creative desk setup I've ever had. And I wouldn't get that with the Mac Studio. But it just goes to show you that it is a great time to be a Mac user. We have got the best Mac hardware out there, probably, and quite possibly, that we've ever had. But just choose carefully, and you can buy yourself a lot of Mac for not that much money, and certainly a Mac that's gonna last you for years to come. Now, through the course of this video, I've been talking about the M4 Pro Mac Mini a fair bit, and there's a video on screen now where I discuss, is it really necessary at all?